What is up everybody? Sven Diesel here. We're going to be tying up one of Bob's surf candy. This is a pattern developed by Bob uh, Popovix and he uh, has basically fished this through the surf and I know a lot of guys that have too and so we're going to tie some up. This is the way I do it and thought I'd make a fun video. So we're going to start with an A-Rex hook. This is an NS115. This is a, a salt streamer hook in a size 2. I would go bigger, um, but for this is about as small as I usually go in a size 2. We're going to use a simper fly. This is a wax thread in an A dot, and I'm using white, and we'll go ahead and get this started. So we'll start right here behind the eye of the hook, put down a nice little thread base here, um, and then as I work my way down the shank, I'm going to not do touching wraps, but kind of spread them out so there's a little bit of gap in between them. I've, this is a little trick I do when working with any sort of deer hair or elk hair um, so that when I tie it in, it kind of provides a gripping area so it doesn't shift on me but uh, that's just a little trick so we'll use a fly skin thin fins for the tail this is a size large on a size 2 like this you could use a medium but uh, I really want this to have a little bit of a longer profile and so I'm just going to take it right here at the bend of the hook pinch it on my side and go ahead and tie that in by the tab and then on my way back down I'll just really crank on it with some nice securing wraps and there we go that's as easy as it is there's our tail the products awesome you can paint it you can coat it with like a a flexible resin or um, I've even uh, glued some of mine with like a super glue but um, the next product we're going to be using is bucktail I love bucktail once you find a good bucktail it is gold and so uh, the the white one I'm almost done with here but I'm going to select some of this bucktail from uh, near the 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 bottom end of this not from the tip they're a little bit longer stiffer straighter fibers and so I'm just gonna pull off a little smidge here grip it in the middle pull any of the shorter ones out and then I'll just basically I want those tips going about to where that back fin is and so I'll just position that and these look like they're almost the perfect length so I'm not going to trim them so all we're gonna do is switch hands try to keep them aligned because it's already got a natural taper to it and then I'll just rotate my my hook upside down and go ahead and do two or three wraps here to secure it do a little bit of a flare on that just to get it nice and um, secure it also helps to push them back as well uh, before the back side of this I'm going to do this uh, top section in a white and then we'll proceed on the next uh, two or three tie-in points with color and so I'm, I'm basically I cut the bucktail out of the same spot so I know it's the right length I pulled out the thinner shorter fibers and I've just got one little brown one in here I'm going to pull out. But um, same process. I'm just going to line up those butt ends right there, put it on top, pinch it, and then do about three to five wraps, just nice securing wraps. Um, since we're not doing two color on this first one, if you have them kind of blending or wrapping around, that's okay. But the little trick here from uh, the Gunner Brammer videos I've seen is just uh, trimming these up so it's not just a – you know, it blends it a little bit better, um, allows them to sit back a little bit better. And the more you trim, the flatter it's going to lay. But we're going to be applying some uh, uh, easy body or minnow body um, wrap over these bucktails that will naturally get them tight. And uh, so we're not too concerned with profile. But I do want to make sure I have like, you know, even distribution of bucktail around the shank of the hook so that we don't have it all on the top or all on the bottom. And then we'll just do the techniques we do the same way as if we were doing this as a non, you know, easy body covering. And I'll just build up a thread dam here. But then to make my life a little easier for the next step, I'm going to really pinch those. And then I'm going to walk the thread up and onto that bucktail just to really clump them together, heading straight back. And sometimes this can be a little bit difficult. If you get a little hump there, that's okay. It's going to get covered. Just make sure that your thread doesn't walk off and we'll be gluing it here in a minute to you know ensure that but we've got that um, basically going backwards I don't want it to have huge flaring if you wanted to go back a little further at this point you could but I also want to have that flared slightly so I know kind of where I'm gonna go with my tapering on my next few sections we tie in and so I'm just gonna add a few more securing wraps in there and then work my way up to basically if you took that uh, where the flare starts on the bucktail, halfway point between that and the eye is where I'll leave my thread. 
And now we get to move on to our next tie in point. We're going to tie in some more white and then we'll add blue bucktail on this. And I'm going to not trim at the base of the tail, but kind of more up towards the third to the top of the uh, the tail. And you can see how these, these uh, hairs are getting a little bit more thin, a little bit more tapered, but um, I need to trim them a little bit because they're a little bit too long. And so I'll just cut off about a half an inch there and then pull out any stray or weird fibers I don't like. And then we'll go ahead and place it um, just like we did before. But now I'll also add a little bit of taper as I just pull out a few of these. Um, it just helps with the, the more profile adding a natural taper. And so you just pull a few out and then you're golden. And so there we go. That looks pretty good. Might have gone a little thin on that clump, but I generally like to go a little thinner on the white on the belly just because we don't want a lot of bulk material between that hook point and the shank. So I don't want to close off that gap. But I, I cut the blue about in the same place that I, I cut the white. I know every bucktail is not the same, so you got to kind of analyze it. But um, usually, generally, if you cut you know, in the same spot, they're going to be roughly the same length if it's a similar size bucktail. But um, it's always good to just measure it. And if it's not lined up, go ahead and trim those butts. Or um, it's, you can't lengthen the bucktail. But um, do that natural taper. Just It doesn't have to be perfect. And then we'll go ahead and tie that in right on top, making sure to pinch that blue. Um, so that it doesn't walk around the shank of the hook because you do want the blue to stay on top and you do want the white to stay on bottom. If you get a couple um, hairs or fibers that go up, it doesn't matter. If you get one or two blues on the bottom, you're not going to get as many likes, but I don't think the fish care. But I try to separate, you know, I'd rather have a few whites going up than a few blues going down, if that makes sense. So go ahead and push those back with your thumb, kind of spread it around this shank of the hook as you're doing this. And I know they make tools if you're struggling to do this, uh, to pull this back. They make some tools that you can use to help assist you in that. But uh, practice makes perfect. As you can see, I'm not perfect, but I, I try and I practice. And that's why we uh, enjoy fly tying. So I'm going to taper this on the top just a little bit. But then on the bottom side, I'm going to really cut out some of these butt ends because I really don't want any bulk on that bottom side of the shank. And that's, that's kind of critical. Um, that way the the easy body will stick right on the shank and we got a good hook gap and so pull those fibers back split them around the point of the hook be careful not to pin you know poke yourself with the hook and then same process as before just kind of wrap over almost like doing like a bullet head on like an elk hair caddis and you just do a nice 10 wraps there to secure that in place and then I'll just check out the other side make sure my blues on top I don't have any weird fibers going anywhere and that looks golden. So we got a nice taper. You can see how some of those tips are aligning with the bulk of the previous section we tied in. And now I'll advance my thread so that I got about half an eye length, maybe a full eye length uh, between the thread and the, uh, the hook eye. And then I'll just apply a little bit of glue there to secure all that that we just did. And then you just got to be careful not to go too quick and get your bucktail all tied up in there but usually we're reverse tying it and so it doesn't matter but go ahead and do the same process and now I'm taking the bucktail almost from the same section as before you can move up on the tip just a little bit we're just going to tie in the blue first but I want those tips to kind of align with you know the top third of those previous tie-in point and that way we're going to have a really awesome taper and so we'll just cut out those butt ends line that up I guess I could do another maybe two sections in this front but I just try to minimize it with three and you'll see in the end it's going to look money um, just going to look perfect because I, I always seem to add too much natural material too much bucktail and this uh, by minimizing that you're kind of going perfect so um, same process keep it on the top we're going to line up the white get all those smaller fibers out and then we'll line it up just by measuring it against the other one we just tied in and that way I know it's on and I'm not pushing it up against the super glue and so we'll just trim out those butt ends and that way it's easier to measure and tie it in at the perfect spot so we'll go ahead and uh, tie that in on the same process we did before just pinch it so that that white stays on the bottom side of the shank and the blue stays on top do about four or five wraps really secure you can see how it's flaring a bit and like I said before I'm trimming most of this white flare I don't really want it to interfere with the hook gap and so 
I can't emphasize that enough. I think that's why I've said it three times now. So we're golden now. Let's uh, go ahead and separate this out. And we're going to keep the white, white on bottom and the blue on top. And just kind of work your thread through once you get that halfway mark. And then push it back with your thumb. Kind of twist it around. Separate it around that hook gap. Uh, the hook point, excuse me, and then do some nice, nice tight wraps there to build up a thread dam. And then we'll advance on to that uh, bucktail doing another bullet head just because we are covering this with some easy body, so it's not necessary for us to make it look perfect because it's going to be covered. So let's advance that on, leaving kind of a little bubble there. It might assist us later in uh, putting the eyes on, but we'll go ahead and get that right there and that looks pretty good so we've now tied in three sections of bucktail you should be a pro and look at that taper just awesome now I'm gonna add some lateral scales this is a, a product that uh, I like to add in most of my salt patterns it's a little bit wider of a tinsel and so it's gonna hold its shape and I just cut out one half of a strip and I measure so it's roughly back to that uh, longest fiber of bucktail and then I'll go ahead and tie it in right there on the bullet that way we're not interfering with the little bump in front of the eye this is a pretty flat surface and then I'll just fold it over do about two or three wraps in front of it and then we are gonna trim it out so it's been tied in and then doubled back over itself and now we've got this other side that we saved and we're just gonna kinda roughly ballpark measure the length you can always trim it later but make sure you have enough room to fold it back over itself um, that is what I think makes it a little bit more durable and more likely to stay in and then also making sure that it's going straight back. So just fold it back over itself, trim it out, and we should be golden. So this is really coming along nice. We are almost done, except for the fun part of making the, uh, the resin body. So let's go ahead and advance our thread up right behind the eye. I'll do a whip finish at this point, and we'll um, get ready to uh, put on our easy body. And so whenever you're going to advance to a different section or material, but um, we actually are going to have to trim this out, but uh, I'll wait a second just to make sure everything's right. So um, next step is we're using some of this uh, Easy Body. It's a product uh, by Hairline. This is size medium, and as you advance to a bigger size hook, you may want to use a bigger, like a large. And uh, so what I do is I cut off a section that's roughly the length from the bend to the eye, and you can see there's a little cord here in it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut down each side of the cord roughly uh, a quarter of an inch to a half an inch. It just depends how much flash or tinsel you want coming off the back side. And then as I do this, I'm going to cut out that cord. And don't worry, it's not going to come undone um, at this point. We're going to resin the heck out of it, and so it should be pretty durable. And then all I do is, oh, let's cut our thread out. I forgot to do that. So you can cut it out. We already went finished. And then all you're going to do is make sure that little notch we cut in lines up with the hook point and then we just slide it back and over making sure our our blue stays on top our lateral line stays visible going down the middle and you can see if you push it too far it's going to cause that bucktail to bend down and so I cut this one just a little bit long so I'm just going to trim a little bit off or you can increase the notch size on the bottom but for that you got to take it all the way off so I'm going to go ahead and push it over I'm going to start my thread right there at the eye again do about four or five six turns and then I'll push that over the eye and then work your thread very carefully without fraying this too much up and trapping all of those fibers that are cut and you'll know and then as soon as you get them all with two or three wraps pull it back just like I did uh, this is something I've you, if you if you have the thread come off and you lose all those wraps just go ahead and undo it and do it again but once you get those and you've got, you can see I'm missing one, but that's, uh, that's pretty good. Um, I'll go ahead and cut out my tag end, and then I'll go ahead and just do a whip finish. That's as easy as it is. But before we do that, I'm going to go ahead and color this to match the blue on the top, and then I'll just take a little bit of marker without gumming up the head too much and just apply it right there to that thread so I don't have to do, you know, 30 turns to cover that at this point. And I'll get the other side as well. We're not just doing this for one side of the fish. We're doing it for a 360 degree, right? And then we'll go ahead and do a whip finish turn. I am using a wax thread, so you want to make sure that you don't try and do like a 10 turn whip finish because it kind of does grip to your whip finish tool. 
and then we'll close that off and we are golden so next step is um, we are going to be placing the eyes on and then we're going to be doing a lot of resin so make sure you've got your UV light out and we'll go ahead and just use I think these are eighth size eighth inch eyes and uh, you can just do them to fit and we'll go ahead and place it right there at the nose and then place one on the other side and just kind of position it. It does have a little bit of stickiness to the back of these but I know they're not bulletproof once they're like this and then I just slightly position them so they're on the not side of the um, fish but kind of on the top angle that way it uh, is kind of not parallel to the sides but almost going a little bit at an angle and check everything out it looks pretty good so let's go ahead and get out our resin I like to start with a thicker resin um, and that way this has a little bit of flex to it as well and the first place I start is right here between the eyes I just put down a glob so that it's bonding those two eye tabs together and then I do a, a little layer right around the eye I don't go over the top of the eye because I found that oftentimes I touch the eye and then it moves but by going around it, it just holds it in place there for a minute, and then I'm going to start ice the cake. I'm just going to lay down bead after bead going up and down. If you've ever caulked a piece of wood or something, you know, you gotta, you're gotta, you not going to cover the whole thing, but zigzag it. And uh, um, that was a bad example using the caulk, but um, you can see how we've basically almost covered this all. Icing a cake would be a better analogy. You don't apply icing to every square inch the first time around. You kind of spread it out and then you use a knife. Like I'm going to use the tip here and I'm just going to spread it out. And a lot of that resin is now penetrating into that um, mylar material, the easy body, and going through into the bucktail, which is just making it a more durable fly and um, increasing the um, strength of it and also allowing that uh, flash of the easy body to come more to the surface and I always seem to have a little bit extra right here at the head so I just apply a little bit more and the key is to keep rotating your vise because if you stop for just a second it's going to drip on you and so I'm just looking for any low spots as I work my way around and then spreading that out evenly and I'm looking like I'm there so let's just go ahead and give a full turn that looks pretty even pretty good and I'll go ahead and just grab my uh, UV light now and as I continue to spin it checking it one more time and I'll go ahead and cure that now um, so that looks pretty freaking good so we'll go ahead and cure that and give it a good cure 10 to 15 seconds maybe longer if you want depending on how charged your light is uh, if your lights dead give it a day no I'm kidding but you can always also leave it out in the Sun which usually I do with most of these I leave them out um, in the Sun and cure for a little bit but um, that uh, that thick resin doesn't have uh, no tack property I believe it is flexible but I want to really just hard shell this and so what I do is I'm gonna grab a, uh, a no tack kind of a thin UV um, this is bone dry and I'll just give it a brush coat I really like having the brush to be able to do this and so I'm just going to start up here as you remember we didn't get too much resin over the eye but with this I can and so I'm just going to apply a generous layer up there at the top and then work my way around getting making sure not to cover the hook eye but covering up those eyes and then spreading that around all over what we just did and then working it a little bit further into the um, body of the fly than before and just really just brushing it on and then we'll go ahead and cure it up and I, I like to do um, roughly two coats of these um, just because it, it increases the durability there's other options like you could do an epoxy coat uh, but then you got to use um, you got to let it dry for 24 hours in a spinning wheel um, there's a lot more process and steps to it rather than just using the UV but I'll go ahead and fast forward through the curing process of this and also applying the second coat but I am going to apply a second coat and we're going to give it a full 20 second cure and I'm not um, adding a huge ton of extra resin to this but just more two coats of a hard shell on the outside so there we go that's a pretty good looking fly um, I'll trim the lateral lines to be the same uh, you could paint the tail if you want you can coat it but I'd like to leave it as is uh, super fishy and so I hope you enjoy uh, tying these up the color combinations are endless I know the bucktail comes in a lot of colors you can swap out the eyes 
But tie some up, fish them, and hope they pierce some lips.